Hello, everybody, and welcome to tonight's a discussion with Stitching California curators and jurors, um, Karen Holmes and Katie Pasquini Masopust. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing those right. We did a test run, but I forgot to confirm pronunciation. Um, so if I did that wrong, they will be with us shortly. So my name is Sarah Schaefer and I'm the Director of Education here at the Museum on Main. And I am so excited to be welcoming you all live with us on YouTube. And I'm just really excited to be sharing this exhibit with you and also talking to these very talented women who are experts in their field and hearing more about the creation of the show and some of the techniques seen in the exhibit. Um, so for those of you, I'm, I'm sure those of you who are here know about the exhibit, but it is Stitching California. Um, and it is fiber artists who um, are using their craft to explore the state's land, people, land, and um, of course, now I'm blinking, um, land and life. That's, I knew there was another L. Um, and it's just a tremendous exhibit and if you are, if you haven't seen it, I encourage you to come and see it. But what I'm going to start with with tonight is an actually a PowerPoint where we're going to go through and look at all of the quilts that are in the show. There are only over 42 of them. So I'm going to share my screen um, really quickly so that we can get started by just giving you a sense of the diversity of types of quilts and subject matter that are covered. That will, I think, be a great backdrop to our presentation tonight. So let me get that up and shared. All right. So here we have the title in its entirety. So Stitching California, Fiber Artists Interpret the State's People, Life, and Land. And the exhibit is currently at the Museum on Main. Uh, it's traveling through Exhibit Envoy, but it was created at the Grace Hudson Museum in Ukiah. This is what the hallway and part of the gallery looks like with the quilts hung, just to give you a sense of time and space here at the museum in Pleasanton. And then we're just gonna go through right into it. So here we have our very one of our very talented speakers, her piece, Valerian Still Life. And then we have Fault Line by the Pixie Ladies, uh, Deb Kashat and Chris Suzuki from 2009. Here we have Oh California by Lynn Crook from 2019. Poppy Reserve by Denise Oyama Miller, 2014. Injustice by Vicki Groom, 2019. Plaza Reimagined by Jean Renly Jurgensen, 2019. California Topo by Lynn Schiffner, 2019. And I will say just that none of these pictures do the quilts justice, the art quilts by ju justice at all. Uh, Hope by Susan Elise, 2016. This is one of the uh, statue quilts. Hillsburg Oaks by Priscilla Reed, 2019. Paradise Lost by Penny Barger, 2019. Then and Now, Connecting Waterways by Donna Brennan, 2018. Popping Up by Nancy Ryan, 2018. Movie Memories by Adrian Dedick, 2019. Madonna by Ricky, uh, I think it's Seyfried, uh, 2018. International Orange by Kathy um, Marinker, 2018. Dancing in the Dream by Cassie Eldberg Gibson, 2019. Caution Carbon Change by Robin Goldner, 2019. <clears throat> Blue Collider Event by Anne Baldwin May, 2019. Pink Cone Flowers by Jan Sulez, 2017. Woodwardia Wonder by Frankie Kohler, 2013. Shadows of Manzanar by Barbara Kibbe, 2019. Second Wind, Fort Point by Susan Kelly, 2018. 
Flowing Two by Nancy Bardich, 2013. El Dorado Crush by B. Lynn uh, Tubby, 2010. Homo Basketry Adaptions by Holly Brackman, 2019. She was one of the curators for the exhibit. Oak Leaves and Acorn by Aileen Renly Cobb, uh, 1998. Bodhi Latitude 38.21354, Longitude uh, 119.0156 by Roberta um, Lago Marcini, 2019. Chico's Cart by Ann Horton, 2012. Eureka by Eileen Searcy, 2018. Painted Ladies by Jennifer Landau, 2018. California Dreaming, Who Can Own a Home by Patricia Reed Porter, 2019. Moonlit Hills of Marin by Melody Money, 2018. Sushi Q, it's one of my favorite titles, by Ann Sanderson, that's 2016. Sierra Snowpack, 1975 to 2015 by Ginny Dixon, 2015. California, California Sojourn by Jerry um, Condon, 2019. Fire and Flood by Carol Larson, 2019. Packing It to Point Raised by Jane Haworth, 2018. The Visitor by Susan Helmer, 2019. That one has a little spider. California Cuisine by Laura Fogg, 2019. And um, this is has a top layer and then the two side images are actually the quilt behind the front panel um, that, that talks more about behind the scenes of California Cuisine, just in case you're wondering why there are three pictures there. Um, Yosemite Valley View from Taft Point by Sue Seifkin, 2019. Sanctuary Two by Barbara, Barbara Comfer, 2017. And Hard to Count, California by Adriana uh, Dawkin, 2019. And I, I ended with this one because we just um, had the census and um, it's speaking about that. So again, this uh, show started at the Grace Hudson Museum in Ukiah, California. Here's a picture of the Grace Hudson. I hope um, many of you have been there. And if you haven't, to um, go and see it in Ukiah. And then we have um, Karen actually shared with me earlier today, this image um, of the Stitching California being installed there. So that um, I hope gives you, because usually we do these discussion with, we do them in the gallery so that you can be surrounded by the exhibit and the works of art. Um, unfortunately, we are all here um, on YouTube. So um, we're all virtual. So I hope that that gives you a little bit of an idea of what we're going to be talking about more today in depth. So I would now like to welcome uh, Karen and Katie on. I'm going to do, I'm going to introduce you all. Hello, Katie. Um, and, and I, did I get your, did I pronounce your names right? Karen? Perfect. <laughs> Although um, I have to say um, on the intro, I put Katie Holmes, but it's Karen Holmes. And um, that was me. <laughs> too excited with my K's and just thinking I had it right. So I'm so sorry about that, Karen. Okay. Um, you deserve to be your Karen, not Katie. <laughs> um, so that is a correction there. Um, but welcome both of you. So I'm just going to share your bio so that uh, we have a little background information on both of you. So I'll start with Karen because I know we're going to be talking a little bit about the exhibit first with some of our questions. So Karen recently retired as curator of collections and exhibits at the Grace Hudson Museum. So she was a very instrumental part of this exhibit. Um, and where she organized and designed numerous exhibits related to the art and artists of the state. She holds degrees in library and information studies and uh, the history of art from the University of California at Berkeley and an associate degree in graphic design and illustration from San Francisco City College. Her many articles and publications includes Days of Grace, California artist Grace Hudson in Hawaii. She's a, war a winner of an award of excellence from the American Association for State and Local History, which is amazing. And post-retirement, she is freelancing in graphic design and exhibit consultation. And I am sure she will be in a lot of demand. <laughs> I'm sure she already is in a lot of demand. Um, <laughs> So, and then Katie Pasquini Mas Masopust um, 
But for 40 plus years, Katie has produced high quality contemporary art quilts that have been coveted and collected by a broad range of admirers. Uh, from her early beginnings as a painter dabbling in traditional quilt making, her work has evolved from structured uh, mandalas and mind-blowing dimensional pieces to very painterly landscapes executed with the finest fabrics and most creative stitching techniques. Katie's easy, energetic manner has made her a very popular teacher and lecturer. When not in residence at her studio in California, uh, which is not in heat, I heard today. She's on the coast, so that's lucky for her. Uh, she travels the world presenting her contemporary quilting theories and techniques to classes, not only in North America, but in Europe, the Far East, Australia, and New Zealand. Awards and accolades have been numerous for Katie, uh, culminating with her 2005 induction into a very select group of art quilt professionals who have earned the Silver Star Award presented by Houston Quilt Festival. She's also a prolific author. Katie shares her enthusiasm for the art of creative quilting through her numerous books, her many classes, and now as executive director of um, a, as it Allegre Retreat held at Gateway Canyons Resort in Colorado, a destination resort for quilting enthusiasts and fiber artists. So I wish I was so ta talented enough to go there. Um, that sounds great. <laughs> um, so welcome to both of you. Thank you for sharing. Um, your talents and your expertise with us tonight. Um, so I'm going to quickly just check on since we're on we're, we're broadcasting from Zoom to all of you who are on YouTube with us. So I'm just going to check in with us on um, on YouTube and see where um, where we are with you all. So um, give me one second to bring that up, just so I can see if we have any comments or questions. Okay, so we have a few of you out there. So thank you for joining us. So we're just gonna get to it. We're gonna do, I have a set of questions for you all. And, um, and if you out there have questions for us, uh, probably not me. I don't know. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm just here to be the moderator. So if you have questions for either of our very talented guests, please put that in the chat in your in the YouTube chat section. You can only use that if you do have an account with YouTube. So if you don't and you have a pressing question that you want answered, I will also be checking my email, which is education at museumonmain.org. So you can always email me if you have a question and you don't feel like you want a YouTube account or you don't already have one. Okay. All right, so um, let's just get started and I'm going to ask the kind of big ticket question, which is how did this exhibit get started? What was the initial seed that planted and created this, this beautiful exhibit? Well, I can start with that if you'd like. Um, it actually started, the, the show opened at the Grace Hudson Museum in 2019. But two years before that, we hosted an exhibit that was put together by the national uh, level of Sakwa, which is the uh, Studio Art Quilt Associates. And Katie, I hope, can uh, talk a little bit more about that organization. But it does have regional chapters. So this exhibit was called Wild Fabrications, and it was uh, about animal-themed quilts. And we had a series of programs affiliated with it. And one of the Northern California, Northern Nevada uh, Sakwa representatives, uh, Denise Oyama Miller, did a program for us and came and saw the show and really liked it. And she asked if we'd be interested in developing an exhibit, an art quilt exhibit for the Northern California, Northern Nevada region of Sakwa that would open at our museum. And so we were thrilled. And so we uh, got it on the books and um, you know, started working on that. And so, as I remember it, the director at that time, Sherry Smith Berry suggested the theme of native California um, because the emphasis at the Grace Hudson Museum, um, it's, it's based on Grace Hudson, who was a 19th century painter and she painted the local Pomo Indians and they're uh, revered for their basketry and regalia. So they are textile artists themselves. And so um, she was kind of thinking of it with more of an in indigenous component, I think, but off it went. And <laughs> um, by the time we started really working on it, the exhibit committee at Sakwa had come up with Stitching California. And um, so, 
Katie, I'm going to turn it over to you. I don't know how you uh, found out about it starting, but. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I was asked to be um, one to juror, jury the show along with you. Um, I didn't know any of the back, background of it. I, I know that SAQWA, I was the president of SAQWA for seven years. And so it's an organization, Studio Art Quilt Association. I'll just address that right now. That'd be great, yeah. Um, yeah, and um, it's a great organization. It um, helps art quilters who want to be professional or show their work. It, it, we mentor people and we help people figure out how, how, to, how the workings of being an artist. You know, it's easy to be in your studio. Well, not easy, but you can be in your studio and making your work, but how do you get it out there to the world and how do you present yourself? So we're really big on that. And we do a lot of shows like this. This one that was at the Grace Hudson was just a really wonderful um, local, not local, but California show in Nevada, yeah. you know, and um, so it was really great to have that happen. But there's shows like this that happen all over the United States, all over the world, actually. Um, SACWA is an international organization. We just had our big conference for the year because of COVID. We did it virtually. So we decided to do Oceania. So we went to Australia and New Zealand where all our presenters. And so that was kind of cool. So there's been some good things of that has happened with Zoom and YouTube and that sort of thing. So yeah, so then this show came about and it, we're very excited, you know, so close. I mean, I'm two hours um, north of the Grace Hudson Museum. So it was good to be a part of it. Yeah, definitely. All right, so um, one, another question I have is, as you're creating this, I know it seems like there was a very, clearly a very strong partnership with uh, SACWA and, um, and they had an exhibit team. So what, um, what were the goals and, and were they the same from, I know, I know there was already a little bit of a different school, but that means we have another exhibit, right? That we can plan. Mm -hmm. But um, what were some of the goals that you were all hoping for when creating this exhibit? Well, for, um, I mean, I, I assume <laughs> that Sakwa wanted to, um, uh, just as Katie said, develop a, a platform for their members to show their work and um, get their name out there and um, introduce people to art quilts. And the Grace Hudson Museum uh, wanted uh, an exhibit. You know, you're always looking for exhibits to fill your exhibition schedule. And we thought it was a really great fit with our mission um, to support Grace Hudson's legacy and the Pomo people. So, uh, and, and everyone was curious, I think, to see what people would come up with because the theme was fairly broad. Uh, yeah, so how did you, how did you get, I mean, was, did it have to be a Sakwa artist to show? I believe you had to be a member of the Northern California or Northern mm -hmm. Nevada uh, chapter. Is that right, Katie? Yes, okay. yes you had to be. It was regional, it was a regional group. Okay, so that probably helped get the word out that you were looking, you were doing this and that you were looking for work. Okay, so that was one of my questions is how, what was the process in getting artists that it was just a... Well, what's the, a, go ahead. Oh, I was just, I was just at, yeah. <laughs> the exhibit committee at SACWA uh, prepared a call for entries and, and got that out to their membership. Uh, and what was, do you, do you remember what that call was? Because you said it was pretty broad. I mean, was it broad just that it was stitching California? It was, had to be California themed or were there any sub themes under that? Uh, well, I can read you what it said on the call yeah. for entry, actually. <laughs> um, California is known as the golden state, but what makes it so? It is a large and complicated place. Quilt artists are invited to explore and reflect on the diversity, illusions, realities, and hopes that define, or at least help us better understand the richness and contradictions of the golden state. So it, it really was, what does California mean to you is how I interpreted it. Yeah. Um, and I think that, that even that call speaks to, I was just talking to somebody who had visited and we were, we were talking about how it was, um, not necessarily different than what we expected, but I I didn't um, 
because I, you know, we're, I didn't, I came into it a little bit naive, I think. Um, and I didn't expect it to be as deep as it is. I thought it would be like a lot of grizzly bears and poppies, <laughs> which we have the beautiful poppies and that's an important component. Um, but th there's like a lot of depth and it, it's, it's, it celebrates our triumphs and it challenges what we still struggle with as a state. And then, um, and I think what we both said was that it's a very honest show about the state. And so I think it doesn't sugarcoat it necessarily. You have the sugar, but it's not fully coated. <laughs> so, um, so I think that even that call to artists like speaks to that, that right there. Exactly. So, um, and then what were, what were the requirements for submissions? I know this is like very technical stuff, but I, some of us <laughs> like, what, what did you have to, and maybe this is uh, again for us, not smart, like art people, <laughs> um, <laughs> where, um, is there a specific definition that defines art quilt versus regular quilt? Is it just that you're like not using it to keep warm? Is that the only difference or? Katie, I'm handing this one yeah, to you. Yeah, that might be a naive one, but I'm wondering if maybe we should start with that sooner. That's fine. An art quilt is, um, you know, you didn't use a pattern. You came up with something, you know, it's like making a painting, um, but you're doing it in fabric. So it's your own design. Um, it has to follow the definition of the quilt. If you use the Sakwa definition, you know, three layers, somehow three layers. Generally, it's a, a, an embellished or pieced or the image batting and a backing. But I've seen wood quilts and, and different things, you know, that challenge that three layers, as long as there's three layers, then it's technically a quilt and harken back to, you know, traditional quilt making, you know, putting pattern together and that sort of thing. So it had to be technically a quilt and it had to do something with California. And I'm not sure if there was a size requirement, you know, had yeah, to be there, there was, um, I, I guess this is a good point to explain that in my role anyway, I was sort of working on three things at once because there was a the catalog. Maybe you can hold it up, Katie. I don't have one if you have it. <laughs> I'll um, run upstairs and get it. <laughs> <laughs> well, never mind. There was a, an exhibit catalog that went along yeah. with the show and that had to be produced uh, before the show opened. So, you know, quite a bit in advance. So I was thinking about that and then I was jurying it and thinking about how it was going to fit the space at the Grace Hudson Museum, but also how, what was the best way uh, to travel it, you know, so that other venues with different spaces and different resources could use it. So, uh, you know, technically <laughs> the SOC was set the requirements and they were looking for, um, Wall art was, was requested at 17 to 60 inches high, 15 to 39 inches wide, and be able to roll for travel. Yeah. So, you know, we didn't want to have too many huge pieces because some of the venues down the line might not have that kind of wall space. And we wanted it to be able to fit into two trunks maybe because a lot of venues don't have a lot of storage space. So there were all these different layers going on at the same time. Interesting. So it was meant to, it was planned for travel. You knew that you wanted to travel it. Yes. Oh, interesting. I didn't necessarily know that. Mm -hmm. um, so that, okay. Well, it did travel really great. Everything was rolled. And <laughs> I remember we were, we are one of those venues that um, if, if those watching have been to the museum, you know, we have one room and four walls and not even a two of them don't even have full space. So, and then we have our hallway, but so we were, so we appreciate that thoughtfulness. <laughs> um, and uh, one thing, one question is um, that maybe some people are curious about is how many submissions did you get? Were there a lot? Uh, we got 78. Okay. And of those 41 were accepted and then Katie had a piece. So that made the 42 um, and the, exhibit committee requested that if artists submitted more than one piece, which they could do, that we only choose uh, one piece for that artist so that a broader range of artists would get to be in the show. And so that determined a lot too, because an artist might have two beautiful pieces, but 
they might have one piece that was replicated thematically by somebody else. So then we wouldn't take that piece just to, you know, get everyone in there and get a broad range of themes. Yeah, share the wealth. <laughs> yeah. um, okay, and what, what, um, this is a big question, but what were the, what were you looking for? So I think there's some probably thematic side and I'm guessing some technical side. So what were some of the, what are, what well, were you on, on, on my side of it, because it's interesting for me to hear Karen say, you know, that you had to think of size and how it's going to hang in the gallery. You know, I'm always thinking of um, how the show is going to look together is one idea. Someone might enter something that's just fantastic, but it doesn't really go with the rest of the things. Um, my first, we, we got all of the images and we juried them in our own homes on a, on a great program on the computer where we could see all of the images. And the first thing I do when I do that kind of thing is to look, just go through without any, just go through it without thinking much, just look at all of the images. So I see all, what was it, 72 did you say? All 78. Yeah. 78. So I, you know, I just go through fairly quickly, clicking through and looking all, at all 78 images. And, and there's some when you're looking through, you go, oh my God, that's a keeper or hmm, we're probably gonna <laughs> that one just just because and my first thing is the visual impact you know how does it hit me how does it make me feel um i know what the what the um requirements of the show are about california there were some pieces that didn't say california to me or you know vice versa i look at the composition to see how well the um elements of the piece are put together how does my eye travel through the piece What's the color, you know, the color scheme? Is it well thought out? You know, I mean, just, just all the visual impact of the whole piece. And then, then the next thing I look at, so I would, I would go through and then I'd go through again. I mean, we went probably, you too, Karen, went through these images so many times and we had to score them, you know, um, a number scoring thing so that the high ones were always kept in, the low ones were knocked out and the medium ones were to be looked at again and again until we got to the correct number that we needed. So once I get in my mind, the ones that are visually interesting to me, then I look at the technique, you know, how, uh, you know, how masterfully were they um, rendered, you know, is, is, is it just too messy, but a great idea, but it just, hard to look at or you know just the different things on you know how masterful the artist was in putting it together and um we had so many different techniques and and so it was really fun to you can't you know it's like judging apples and oranges but to bring the show together to show california yeah um for my end i a lot i was looking for a lot of the same things as katie um but I was thinking, how is this all gonna work together in the room? Um, will they complement each other? And I was really looking for storytelling too. Um, I'm really glad that you appreciated it, Sarah, and that you thought it was complex and um, because that was something that we were working for too. And I had the very same fear that we were going to get you know, 100 entries of California poppies and then what would we do? You know? <laughs> And there were some California poppy ones and they're beautiful and they deserve to be in there. But yeah. I was hoping to have a variety. And I was, I think we were both really pleased with the, the breadth of topics that we got. Yeah. yeah, it was, it was quite awesome. I mean, you know, I, I made a list. I looked through the catalog, which I left downstairs. I, told you <laughs> I, remember, but I left it downstairs. We have a birthday on the museum. So if you want it, if, if anybody watching wants it, you can come to the museum. It's a beautiful catalog. The yeah. photography in it is fabulous. The quilts look beautiful. So it's yeah. well worth it just to have it. Um, you know, the people we had, we had a lot of um, Native American themes, you know, the basket weaving, that sort of thing, Spanish and, and the Mexican influence. There was quite a few piece, pieces on dancing and um, the were, there was one with a cart of Mexican paraphernalia. Yeah, Oh, it's just beautiful. And then there was, you know, like you said, some of it was pretty deep. There was uh, several quilts about the Japanese and the, you know, the internment that they had to go through. And, and so there were some very heavy things that were addressed in, in climate change, you know, 
lot of climate change. Yeah. Wow. Change, waste and but then there were the beautiful the redwood trees the poppies as we we've talked about the grapes the vineyards the the agriculture there were several maps of california there was about the the fault line you know they were always worried about our earthquakes and everything i'd rather have an earthquake than a tornado or <laughs> things, you know just a little shaking of the ground isn't as bad um you know we had the oaks a lot of oak about mm -hmm. the great oaks that we have, um, the mountains, the valleys, the oceans. I mean, we, it's such a diverse state. I mean, it's a long state and there's lots of different things. That, and I think we covered uh, everything. I, I can't think of anything that we missed. <laughs> Gold mining, we got Hollywood in there. And the right. and iconic there. places. Yeah, I thought our job was fairly easy in that people really didn't do all the same thing. They really searched it out and everyone had their own focus. It was really great. Yeah, yeah I think that's that's great. I, I, um, it really shows. And, and I think um, since you're talking about some of the themes that showed up, did, did you, I mean, I guess if you said that you were hoping that it wasn't gonna be all just the pretty stuff, um, did you, do you think about themes? Because I know now in the online exhibit, they're kind of laid out in those themes to some degree. Mm -hmm. um, is that something that you, were you kind of ch checking off boxes or it just happened kind no, of? As, well, as I went through them, they just started naturally falling into certain ca categories for me anyway. And um, it, it's, it seemed to be a good way to organize the show. I and mean, that's how it was hung at the Grace Hudson okay. Museum thematically like that. So there were a couple of industry ones like Hollywood, you know, the film industry, the blue collider uh, was the, you know, the thing where they shoot atoms or whatever <laughs> that was influenced by that industry and uh, the iconic places went together. And yeah, so it, it made it easy to- um, It did, it did and it also, um, also, if there was too many poppies, you know, there were more poppies than are in the show. So, you know, you could find the best of the poppies, the best of the redwood trees, that mm -hmm. sort of thing. Um, not that the other ones, other pieces that weren't included in the show of that theme weren't good enough. It's just that you couldn't have a show of all redwood trees. Right. Exactly, unless it was like redwood trees are quilts. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, which is not what this was. But yeah, so I think, um, yeah, so definitely kudos to you as the jurors for honing that at, down and really making this this really layered exhibit. Yes. And I layered. Yeah, layered. <laughs> Three layers. See Three layers. layers. <laughs> layers. Um, and I think it's interesting just as a, as a person observing visitors, and I'm sure you have your own experience having it been up at the Grace Hudson. Um, but what I love too is that when people come up to me and they say, oh, it's just such a great exhibit. It's so wonderful. It's it's so much more than I expected it to be. And then I expect them to say it's like especially this one and I always kind of like is efforts I expect it to be the same one or a select few that I think are really like whoa that really makes you think but so far nobody has repeated the same <laughs> quilt to me it's always a different quilt because it it's so much about how they see it and what they experience I would imagine and that it reminds them of something or or it just speaks to them differently but I love that I haven't had a single repeat <laughs> That's we did our it. job then, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is just a discussion which to tell me how to tell you all how wonderful you are. Um, and that you were you did such an amazing job, which you did. So um and we're both native Californians, and I think that that entered into it too, that when we saw a, a quilt about a specific place that maybe we'd been there, it resonated for us as Californians too. So that was kind yeah. of fun. And I also wanted to mention that it was, we didn't know who the artists were. That wasn't revealed to us until after uh, the show had been selected. So would, if they had submitted two pieces, it would have been like artist A.1 and A.2. Yeah. Like right. we, knew, we knew we could, you know, if someone had three pieces, we, we knew there, there are three pieces and we got to pick one of those. Okay. And then there were a lot of singles. Yeah. And it was also, I also tried to have different techniques 
represented. You know, there was pieced work, there's applique, there were photo transfers, there um, were three, we had several 3D pieces, which was kind of fun to be, you know, to think that we want to have some pedestals and, and have some 3D works out there. There were hand painted things that were then quilted. So it, fusing, turned edge, I mean, everything was represented there, which I think is also really nice for, especially someone who's not a quilter to come in and see the different ways, you know, some of them were mixed media and how people put things together that they weren't all piece, they weren't all applique. So it was a very diverse technique as well. Yeah, And we even have one that's um, fully hand quilted, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I know uh, for those who haven't seen the show, I would encourage you to come on a Saturday um, if you're able, because we will have Sacwa artists every Saturday um, from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m., opening to closing. And um, I, yes, last Saturday was the first time I was able to actually take time and walk through with one of them. And the things that I learned from them, even beyond what's in the book and what's on the um, audio tour, it's just the phone, the phone tour. It's still, there's just so much to see and uh, learn. Um, about the different techniques and to see it in person. So uh, I definitely encourage you to come during those hours as a side plug. Um, <laughs> so no, really interesting to have um, other artists explain. Yeah, and, and they're all, I think except for one, they're all artists who have work in the show. Oh, nice. um, so yeah, cause I think there were, we had enough semi-local <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> willing to drive. <laughs> um, so I appreciate, I definitely appreciate their time um, and just sharing, sharing their expertise too. Um, so for the next question I have, um, and I think we've spoken to this a lot, but I'll just see if there's anything else you want to add, but what do you hope that visitors get out of the exhibit or feel when they're in the exhibit? Well, um, on the surface, of course, to learn more about art quilts and and admire their creativity and workmanship, but um, in, to think deeply about what our state is about and what's going on with it and how people are addressing certain issues. Um, just the fact that some issues came up again and again, I think is representative of probably how people in the state are feeling. So um, just to be reflective about that, I guess is my wish. And um, yeah, it's beautiful, but it's got some problems, I guess. <laughs> exactly, yeah, it, it is beautiful and the quilts are beautiful, but some of them really dig deep, uh, you know, issues that face every, every state, but mm -hmm. ours in particular. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, it being such a diverse state, it, there was a lot of different issues that were spoken to. So that was, was really great. I was really proud of all the people that entered. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then one thing, did you learn anything um, yourselves? I'm curious um, to have gone through, you being Californians yourself too. And one thing I wanted to ask about that, just to circle back is, um, are you both native na native Northern Californian or? Eureka, born in Eureka, California. Moved okay. away from San Francisco. San Francisco. Okay. Yeah. All right, so we're, all three of us are, nor are native Northern Californians. <laughs> Okay. Um, and my dad used to say, there's no there there after once you get further down. Just <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's a Northern California snob. Um, <laughs> so, um, okay. So back to my other question. Um, when did you, do you feel like you learned anything professionally or personally, or was there anything that you might want to share that was kind of a special moment or I don't know, anything like that, that any take homes, any? Well, um, I'm not a quilter. And so for me, um, I was amazed at the depth that some of the quilts got. I mean, essentially they're two dimensional, but you know, looking through the redwoods, you could get that feeling of space or looking down into Yosemite Valley. Um, that was amazing to me that you could achieve that with flat material. Yeah. Yeah. And then I had not worked with the guide by cell program before. So for those of you who haven't been to the, the show, um, 
each quilt was assigned a number and then you could phone a certain number and put that number in and then you would hear the artist talking about that quilt. So that was a really easy, um, convenient way to add an audio component. So technologically, that was something new for my museum anyway. Yeah. yeah. And it, yeah. it really enhances. So it's a good, I'm glad that you did that. Yeah. Good, good addition. Um, I, um, I was real interested in, you know, my first thing, visual impact and, you know, color and all the technical, but then to read the story, mm. the artist statement about the piece would sometimes change my mind on how I felt about a piece. Mm -hmm. So I think a well-written uh, artist statement about the piece is important and um, made me stop and, and look again at some of the pieces. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, were there any challenges? I mean, we, we you guys were, we get to ask the behind the scene questions. So were there any really like, well, it's hard to, to eliminate things, you know, I mean, especially if there was, uh, someone who had three really, really, really strong pieces that you wanted to put them all in. And, you know, so it's, it's a struggle to, you know, why, okay. It might be that Karen liked two of their pieces and I liked the third one and uh, <laughs> so then we would have a little discussion you know and then and so oh there's another thing that I learned is how to defend the piece that I thought was better but also how to listen to the other point, person's point of view on and then coming up with something that we both could be happy with from that one artist who entered multiple pieces so, you know, there, yeah, there's always struggles and, you know. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine that would be the hard part. <laughs> it was a struggle to get together to do the jurying because it was summer. The, the show opened in August and we did the jurying in June and we were both traveling and we had busy schedules and to like find a time that we could actually get together we we looked at it separately and then came together and started discussing it but and then the crunch of the catalog that came right after the jurying we had to select the pieces so they knew what photos to put in the catalog so for me a time crunch was an element um, mm -hmm. and time management kind of <laughs> um, well, it seems like things had to, once they were decided, they had to happen quickly. So it's right. hard to know what the best, the best laid plan to <laughs> Um And then, um, so I know, Katie, you kind of talked a little bit about the techniques seen in the exhibit. Um, I think, I don't know if you want to elaborate on any of them or if you want to say them again, or if there's any more you want to add. Um, I just want to make sure that you feel like that's covered. I think it's covered. I mean, I the show covered all the techniques, you know, I mean, from um, embellishing and hanging things on the quilts and 3D things on the quilts and then the 3D objects that we had in the piece, pieces that were photo generated, you know, with the printing that's possible with spoon flour and that sort of thing. Um, uh, like you know, the wedding situation. The what? Uh, there's like, I see there was like, when you have the little pieces, there's the, they put the net over it to help. Yeah, there, there was some of that, I think. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there was just all sorts of different techniques and, and different people coming up with solutions to the problem of, of illustrating what they're trying to say. Yeah, so it was great. I think everybody did a great job. Yeah. So if you want to know more about the techniques and see kind of some of those things um, that Katie's talking about, come to the museum and um, we'll, we'll help point them out or, um, we'll look close at them. Yeah. Look close. You have to look close. Don't touch it. Except for one, uh, one you can touch, but look closely and, um, and we can help point out some of the stuff the docents have taught us on Saturdays. And, and if you come on a Saturday, they certainly can, um, explain more. Uh, and then let's see one question I know I get at the museum all the time. So I'm going to ask you, and you might not have an answer and I know it depends, but how long does it usually take to make an art quilt? Can you put a number on it? <laughs> Depends on the size, the complexity, the technique. Right. Yeah. And then, you know, do you factor in getting the idea, like doing the research and the inspiration and all that? Um, I don't think you can really say. <laughs> yeah. And, and hand quilting versus machine quilting and 
piecing an applique. It's all, it's subjective. Yeah, but hours. Let's, uh, we can agree it's hours upon hours. <laughs> so, yeah. was, you know, uh, not, not, not quilt in a day. No, not <laughs> No. This is a very popular traditional quilt making way, but these 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 people, these artists, are um, creating them as artworks to be seen from a distance, hanging on a wall. And you know, you know, how would you ask a painter how long it took him to paint the painting? I probably I would, but I'm. <laughs> Well, no, but, but that's because, you know, yeah. I'm that person. Um, it's like, how long did that take you? Um, <laughs> I'm on that kid that asked George Washington, what's your favorite cookie? We had that happen when we had a George Washington figure. I'm totally that kid. Um, so, but yeah, no, I agree. Like there's no, it, because you, there's so much that goes into it. And it's not quantifiable, um, but it, it's, it's a long time. So, yeah. it, and you'll, you'll be, you'll, you'll see that very easily when you see the quilt in person <laughs> um and um this is another one i'm i know you can't answer i'm sure but i'm I, or you do but you're not going to say but you don't have and i don't even so do you have any favorites <laughs> right <laughs> they're like no we're not answering there, um, there were many that were my favorites yeah. and my favorites for different reasons so you know some were just the texture was gorgeous or the colors or the composition or the message yeah you know, I really I don't think I could choose one that was my favorite right. yeah I think that's well said sorry yeah. go ahead Katie. same thing I mean uh, and I know that at some shows they have viewers choice and you know I mean what does that tell you I you know <laughs> so many different people's opinion um so I did I, I think that I I, I want to say that if you got in the show you did great you know, I mean, there was people that didn't get in. And so, you know, I, uh, you know, it's like what they say at the Academy Awards, just being nominated was enough. <laughs> so, you know, getting into the show is just enough. Yeah. Well, and I think that viewer's choice is, is, is problematic, just as I said, because so far, every single person that's come to me in the two and a half, three weeks that we've been open, it's been right. a different quilt every single time. So, and mine changes daily. It depends on my mood, like which one's <laughs> my favorite. Um, <laughs> So, and um, I realize it wasn't that long ago. So this is kind of my, um, my, my final question. Then we'll see if there's any um, additional on the YouTube or in my email. Um, but I realize it wasn't that long ago, only 2019, but a, clearly a lot that can happen in <laughs> a year or two years. Um, so if you could do it again, is there anything you would change or anything you would add? I, I wish that... Um that there'd been a little more uh, work between Sakwa and the Grace Hudson Museum uh, early on. Um, it all worked out great, but you know, that would have been nice. And then I, what I think became very apparent to me and Katie's already addressed this is it would have been nice to stress to the applicants that, you know, you're trying to win the judges over. You want to put your best foot forward. So, good photographs, clear, large, you know, high resolution, so we can really see what you're doing. And then a good description, um, you know, some of the pieces, they may have been good, but the photos weren't that great or the description, I couldn't really tell what it was. We're just looking at a flat photo. Mm -hmm. And so I think it's very important that you write a compelling description, you have a good story, you're describing well, what your goal was and you know i think that would have been helpful for the applicants uh, yeah. if that had been laid out so yeah. That's yeah. Nice. it's yeah and you know the like you said the good the image imagery you know i pay to have a professional photographer take care of my work because you know i never know whether i'm taking a good picture or not the light is right or whatever mm -hmm. or you know and no little fingers or feet hanging out at the bottom <laughs> but yeah so the, I think there were a few of them that we couldn't even enlarge big enough to see them oh, and right. so then we it may have been the most fabulous piece ever but we couldn't see it we couldn't enlarge it to look at it closer so yeah just check that yeah. and especially with the techniques that are so much a part of an art quilt in person um 
you know, it's hard to see that in a photograph unless it's photographed well to, mm -hmm. to show off the techniques. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. and, and I'll say that I, we did that kind of slideshow at the beginning and, and those are really good photos. Those are from the online exhibit. And to me, I still, since I see them in person every day, they still, to some degree, really don't do it justice, even the great ones. So I can imagine if yeah. it's not that great of a photo, it would be virtually impossible to get a sense of it. Yeah. So yeah. Um, do you think if you yeah. did it again, there would be things about staying at home or, or a, a quilt <laughs> COVID <laughs> under? <laughs> There's already a COVID show out there. Sandra Sider did a COVID show. Oh, and, interesting. Uh, All right. Yeah. I, I thought I, I wouldn't change much. I thought the pieces, maybe more pieces, it would have been nice to have more pieces entered um, because it was sort of what we had twice as many entered as we could have chosen. Mm -hmm. And I like more options. But other than that, I think, no, I think it went, on my side, it just as a, a judge, I thought it went really well. I know Karen had to do a lot with all the technical and the gallery and stuff like that. I just, I just sat down and I like this one. I don't like this one. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I don't want to burst anyone's balloon, but actually quilt shows are among the easiest shows um, to hang because nothing's breakable. Yeah. Um, they're light. You, yeah. you can use the same hanging system for all of them. So it, it's not uh, technically difficult that way. Um, so. Yeah. Well, it looked uh, beautiful. You did a great job, Karen. Oh, thank, thank you. you. So did you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you yeah. both did. I mean, together you you came up with a truly a stunning show that that is bringing droves of people to the museum every day specifically for it. And, right. um, and, and they walk out thinking, you know, and, and, and have learned something about art quilts. They're amazed by it. Maybe they've not, maybe they expected it just to be like a quilt show and not necessarily this kind of art quilt experience. Um, so, so I think you definitely both did what you, what you make. One of my questions are, do you think you met your goals? And it's like, I can tell you right now, you met your goals. <laughs> I don't even I want to put a plug in for exhibit envoy too. Um, so they're a nonprofit organization that travels exhibits through California and the rest of the US. And so, uh, you know, I think that was a goal for Sakwa to, to travel it and get the show out there and get information about quilts out there. And it's in, I think there have been 10 different hosts, either um, in person or online and from Chico all the way down to Southern California. So that's really great. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I have the, the, um, the list right here. And mm -hmm. um, yeah, the, we, have, we, we got extra for those who can't come or if they don't feel comfortable yet, we do have the online, which is phenomenal. So that the creation of that, um, which I think as far as I know was led kind of through exhi Exhibit Envoy, um, is phenomenal. There's some activities. There's a puzzle at the a end. Puzzle, um, so fun. I you encourage you to do the puzzle. Yeah. <laughs> you can choose if it's like a thousand pieces or five. I did the middle one and um, that was, it was so fun. So there's, and there's a lot of like at home activities and things. So um, definitely check out the online exhibit. Even if you still come to the show, there's still some great stuff on there. Um, and when you knew it was going to travel, had you, did you have exhibit envoy in mind? Yes. Um, I'm not positive, but I think what happened was that uh, we suggested to Sakwa that we thought this would make a good traveling show and they were interested. And then we suggested Exhibit Envoy because we work with them a lot. Yeah. And, and so do, I, I mean, three of our first... the year, Exhibit Envoy. What? I think it might've been Exhibit Envoy's first quilt exhibit. I'm oh, not okay. positive. Um, I think maybe Amy was supposed to be on YouTube, so she might be able to, um, she was supposed to be watching. So if I go and look at comments, she might be able to say yay or nay to that. Um, but yeah, and it, I mean, clearly it has the appeal to travel because it's such a, it, it applies to all of us who live here. Um, so let me go and just look at our um, YouTube stream and see, um, yes, Amy is here. Um, and uh, she, let's see what she says. So, um, so Kate, Amy asks, um, 
we're, uh, where's Katie, where's your studio located just generally if you're open to sharing um, and does the location impact your work? Um, I'm, I'm in Fortuna, California. Um, I, my studio, I'm in my studio right now. It's upstairs of my house. There's two big rooms up here. One is my dry studio where I'm working on a quilt now. And the other room across the hall is my wet studio where I paint. And um, it's not open to the public. It's just my studio. And um, if it influences my work, I lived in New Mexico for 25 years. And I, I, think, I think I was influenced in my colors differently in New Mexico. And now I'm here where it's way greener and trees are way taller. And uh, yeah, I think it influences just the way you look at color and your inspiration. We're same. Um, I'm glad that you said that that color thing because we added there's coloring pages on the online and I said be the quilter and because uh, it's coloring pages so it's like choose your colors that's an important part of the composition and and what you're thinking about so I'm glad you I'm glad you talked about how the colors can even change by what you choose is, is yeah. influenced uh, okay let's see if we have any other questions it is oh, so Amy does confirm it is our first quilt exhibit in a long time if not in general um okay. And then um, John Oligmuller asks, are the quilts hand stitched or some machine stitched? And I think, I'm pretty sure we answered that, that there's one hand stitched. Well, a lot of them, some of them had different parts, like some embroidery and so a mixture, but mostly a lot of machine work, yeah. Um, all right, good question. Uh, do we have any other questions from the audience? I'll give them a second. I'm just gonna check my email because I know um, not all of our um, visitors have a YouTube account. Um, so I'm just gonna check that really quickly, see if we have any questions there. So we don't have any questions there and it looks like we don't have any additional questions uh, coming in on YouTube. So- Well, gonna... we must okay. have been very clear. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That must have been it. <laughs> yeah, I think, well, I, we, I asked you a lot of questions. There's multiple pages of questions. I, I hate you guys with a lot. So, um, so definitely thank you for your time. I think I, I really enjoyed this. I know I'm sure our audience did. I learned uh, a lot from you guys and the experience. And it's nice to just get the behind the scenes. Of, we see the great show. And usually we talk to the artists, which Katie, we get to kind of talk to it. Not kind of, we do get to talk to the artists <laughs> have a piece in the show. Um, but it's nice to hear the behind the scenes work that often a lot of us don't, um, don't, don't really know all of it that goes into it, especially the art shows here at, uh, we're just, you know, we generally do the history stuff and mix in art and science um, in our traveling shows. So it's nice for our audience to see that side of it. Uh, for the audience, so thank you guys so much for your time and your expertise. Um, for the audience out there, I wanna remind you that, like I said, we have the Meet the Artist Saturdays. So come into the museum anytime we're open and there should be an artist there. Um, and then we have our local fiber artists who are coming, um, it's gonna be a showcase of four of them that is on Saturday, July 17th from 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, none of them are uh, art quilt, or they're not quilt artists, um, but they're gonna show their own type of fiber arts and kind of showcase the diversity of fiber arts in general. Um, uh, so that's July 17th, that'll be on the front lawn, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then on July 31st, we will have a drop in crafts all day, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. until supplies run out um, of fiber craft related, um, inspired by the exhibit. Um, so we'll have um, California themed fiber crafts, um, we'll make some cards, a Pleasanton arch out of felt and um, some paper quilt squares um, that you can piece together. So uh, we hope you'll join us for that. That's July 31st from 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. And we are working on an art discussion. So stay tuned for that. And that is my spiel. So uh, thank you all. Have a good night and um, we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.